brought us out to Fairview Cemetery this week for our midweek pause. I bring us here because you and I have been here. We have come here in times of grief and come here because we were mourning the loss of a loved one. You see, we mourn when we grieve. We, our mourning is our public expression of that grief. That's why we have funerals and memorial services and celebrations of life. It's why we gather with other loved ones when we spread a loved one's cremains. We mourn according to our cultural and social norms. Our mourning is a public expression of our very personal and intimate grief. Grief is something that we all experience. It's the internal experience that can look like many different emotions. Sometimes it's sadness, sorrow, it can be anger and loneliness. It can be anguish and confusion, shame and guilt. Sometimes fear as a consequence of loss. Fear is more complex than mourning. It is very individualized, but common to every one of us. Mourning helps us express our grief and find loving support in it. It's one reason that having loved ones die during this pandemic has been so hard. You grieve and we haven't been able to mourn with you. Centuries ago, the Roman poet Ovid wrote that suppressed grief suffocates. That may be how you're feeling grieving alone. It's very difficult. Lament can be expressed in a poem or a song or a speech expressing regret and sorrow over something. It's also an expression of grief. We lament things that have no cultural way to mourn. For example, we, we lament divorces. We lament loss of jobs. We lament loss of beloved pets. It's very real. We lament things that haven't been formalized into social events or services. So our lament for COVID-19, our lament for racial injustice, our lament for worldwide economic fragility is very real, but not something that we do in a ceremony. We lament as an expression of very personal and intimate grief. We also lament as a spiritual practice. There's an entire book in the Bible on lamenting, the Book of Lamentations. Henry Nouwen wrote, that healing means, first of all, the creation of an empty but friendly space where those who suffer can tell their story to someone who can listen with real attention. I hope that at least one someone for you is God, who loves you more than you can imagine. The psalmist tells us that weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Now I know, <laughs> It doesn't promise which morning, but I can tell you from personal experience, it does come. It is a promise of hope that joy will again return to you. One of my favorite country singers, Kathy Mateo, sings about us never learning that we go through life parched and empty while we stand knee deep in a river and dying of thirst. It's quite an image, isn't it? For those who follow Jesus as his disciples, he is the living water for our parched and empty lives. He is our hope back to joy from our deep grief, our inability to mourn our loss, our practice of lament. My friends, drink deeply of all that he offers you. And if you need a listening ear, where you can tell your story in a judgment-free zone. Any of your pastors would be that place for you. May you live into this week knowing that you are loved, knowing that God cares, and that God promises to restore your joy.